We would like to welcome you to our Sabbath School lesson preview today. We are going to study lesson number 11. The title is Peter on the Great Controversy. I'd like to invite you for a word of prayer. Our Father in Heaven, we thank you and praise you for our 33rd year anniversary in this place. We thank you for the, your faithfulness. I thank you for your grace and mercy. We had a great time today worshiping you and enjoying your presence. And I would like to invite the Holy Spirit once again to teach us, to direct us, to guide our minds that we will understand the truth and the truth will set us free. Thank you for the lesson that we learned from Peter. From this lesson study today, I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming. Our lesson 11 is uh, Peter on the Great Controversy. Last week we studied about Paul and the rebellion. So I would like to, before we read the text, I would like us to understand who Peter was, all right? So Peter was telling in our lesson that experience is the best teacher, and if we are learning from our experience, our experiences are teaching moments. Is that correct? We learned that and we have heard that. So experience is the best teacher, and we can learn if we, if we will allow that that experience, whether it's good or bad, to teach us uh, what God wants us to be. All right, in Peter's perspective, okay, from Peter's perspective, we, we can see the reason why he experienced his experience, and we will see the result, all right? So this is from Peter's experience here. Peter's experience, all right? Did he deny his Lord? It was very famous in the in the gospel. He denied his Lord, but later on he confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes, yeah. yeah, so deny. He the reason of his experience is he denied the Lord, and now he has uh, he 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 confessed Jesus. Now at the onset, what's the difference between Judas and Peter? Now Judas was the opposite, the co complete opposite. Opposite. Mm -hmm. He confessed that he is with the Lord, mm -hmm. but later on he denied the Lord. He denied the Lord by betraying the Lord. And after Jesus was crucified, what happened? He, because of guilt, he hanged himself. He, according to the spirit of prophecy, desire of ages, he, not, he did not repent. He was, remor uh, he was uh, uh, crying or mourning, but he did not repent. It, the trans that this plan didn't, didn't uh, succeed, succeed correct yes so that's the opposite of Peter so we're talking about Peter's experience so he denied the Lord and he confessed the Lord later on now where can you find this we will read this darkness into light now he describes his uh, through his writings that he came from darkness to light what's the difference between darkness and light hmm? Could you see darkness? No. <laughs> you can, yeah, you see black. <laughs> Could you see light? Yes. Of course. So Peter, uh, we will read later on. Peter describes his experience as darkness into light. It was called, and then Peter understand that uh, his experience is uh, is the teacher. He teaches him, and it also will teach us. Which is the best teacher, experience or theory, or what you learn in the classroom? Both. <laughs> Both. Yeah. Experience, I, I heard, is the best teacher. Yeah. Yes. yes it's, it's, transform. Later on, Peter was transformed into uh, a daring, bold, no holds barred, um, a, pos a disciple and apostle of Jesus Christ. And to summarize, Peter's experience was from a failure to faithful. Amen? Mm -hmm. From failure to faithful. Now let's read from the scriptures. I would like us to open your Bibles to the first. I, I structured our study this way because to me the center of, of our of, of how we learn wisdom, how we how we uh, discern things is through experience. Okay? So let's first begin reading in Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2. This is what Peter quoted uh, when he wrote uh, first Peter. Chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. And I wrote it there. It's the calling of 
uh, God's people. All right. What are they called to do or called to behave? So Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 14.2. If you're there, please uh, uh For you are a holy read. people to the Lord your God, and the Lord has chosen you, chosen you, sorry, to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. Who are they? Uh, I'm sorry. This is referring to who? You are uh, what? The Israelites. The Israelites, Israelite. specifically yeah. during the time of Moses. So God was calling His people, His chosen people in the Old Testament by calling them, You are a holy people. Now when you say holy people, what, what comes into your mind? Holy. What is holy? <coughs> Separated. Separated. What is holy? Set apart. Mm -hmm. Holy is something that is not, um, I would like to, what I read when I was studying this, uh, what I have written when I was studying this lesson. Holy means, you know, ordinary people who were chosen to serve an extraordinary purpose. Ordinary people who were chosen to serve extraordinary purpose. What's an extraordinary purpose? in our time today to preach the final message of salvation to, to a dying world, correct? Yeah. So holy people are just ordinary people serving extraordinary purpose. According to the text, they are special treasure. When you're a special treasure, it means you are dear to someone's heart. Are you dear to the Lord, to God's heart? Because when you have treasure, the Bible says, where your treasure is, there is your heart also. So when you have a special treasure, it means that, uh, you know, it is very dear. So who, who is very dear to the Lord's heart? It's His people. The church. The church. So this is the calling of the Old Testament church. Yeah. This is exactly what, what, uh, why the Israelites were called out. From the bondage of Egypt to the promised land, Canaan. So they were called out from slavery to redemption. They were called out from idolatry to serving one true God. Alright? So that is Deuteronomy 14 verse if 2. They are, if they are choosing, how come they get become slaves? If they were chosen, how come they become slaves? They, they became slaves by their own choosing, not by the choosing of the Lord. Remember the Bible says, if they obey, they will be prosperous. But if they disobeyed, they will not be prosperous. The protection of the Lord will not be with them. And in fact, the Lord used other nations to discipline them, mm -hmm. discipline them right? Yeah. Remember in the, in the narrative. Mm -hmm. So, I believe that when the Lord chooses you, it doesn't mean that your experience will all be rosy and, and good and, and great Having fun, no, no, no uh, bumps along the way. I think that's not how it is. In fact, God allows you to experience bitterness. God allows you to experience disappointments. God allows you to experience frustration. Yeah, but, but uh, if you are chosen, uh -huh. you, should not, you should not experience those things. If you are chosen, you're, yeah. you should not be experienced. <laughs> well, well no. Jesus was chosen. Yeah, he was well. chosen. Jesus he was himself. chosen <laughs> to die. To, he was chosen to die, not to live? Uh, well, uh, that's, that's what the Bible says. <laughs> well, he was chosen to make himself a sacrifice for our sins. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because the problem of sin. But, but we must always remember, they are chosen, but they are still free. Yeah, they have free moral agent. Yes, you're right. They have freedom to choose. If they, you know, nature, you cannot, you cannot, um, uh, uh, you cannot go against nature, so to speak. Uh, whatever goes up, comes down. That's nature. Uh, what you saw, you reap. You're right? Uh, if you disobey, you will die. If you obey, you will live. That's, that's how nature is. So if you echo, it, uh, if you speak and, and there's an echo, it comes back. So that is nature. You cannot, natural laws, I mean. And so let's go back here. So this is the, the, the foundation where First Peter chapter 2, 9 and 10 was uh, in in context so let's go to first peter 
chapter 2, chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. Uh, I'd like you to open your Bibles. Please, those of you who are watching, you could follow us by uh, opening yeah, your, your, your Bibles. Uh, same idea. In uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. My brother, could you read it? But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So Peter here... Wait, wait, wait. wait. Okay. Who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had no obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So Peter was quoting directly from Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2. In the context that he was telling that, you know, the, they were, they were uh, after the uh, in, experience in Pentecost, they were proclaiming, doing their mission of God. And he was preaching this and quoting from Deuteronomy 14, verse 2, that you are a chosen generation. How, uh, what is a generation? <laughs> a 20 years. 40 years? They said 20. <laughs> they said it's 40. 40? Yeah. yeah. Okay. A royal priesthood. Makes, makes more sense to me. Yeah, a royal priesthood. Do you remember someone who is a royal priest? Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Yeah. Royal Jesus. Pri Jesus himself, right? He was he Melchizedek was out of the line uh, from the Levitical uh, Levitical priesthood mm -hmm. by succession by virtue of the uh, being uh, let's say bloodline by being born into uh, Levitic Levi the tribe of Levi. So you are in in it's saying that you are you are royal priesthood just like, well, not, not exactly like Jesus Christ, but in your own sphere, you are a royal priesthood. What does it mean if you are a royal priesthood? Meaning to say there is, uh, what, is the, uh, what is the function of the priesthood? To mediate. To mediate? What is their specific purpose in, 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 in function? I mean, in the in the temple. He's uh, responsible for the sacrifices. Okay. And uh, he's the one who mediates between the sinner and God. He's the one in between. Representing God's people to God, and representing God to His people. He's serving as a, a priest. Yeah. How Both. could this? How could we apply royal priesthood? in our present uh, modern life. You are a royal priesthood. Yes, you are chosen. You came out from darkness, now you are into <laughs> light. How about the Pope? Yeah. <laughs> How about the, <laughs> How about the Pope? He, is he a royal priesthood? Well... No, he is not royal. Huh? He is not royal. Mm -hmm. He is not royal. He, he, he is not a king. No, uh, uh, oh. priesthood. No, no, no. He is, he is the head of state. But he's not king. No, no, he's he not is king. functioning like a resident, but not like a king. It's a political, religious yeah. uh, power. Power, right? But they are. But they are uh, well, they are called priests in their denomination. Yeah, right. yes, right. they are all priests. They are all priests. In fact, he's the bishop of Rome. Right. And uh, the Bible says, uh, tells us about uh, this power that will come and that will come and be in our own time. Uh, proceeding before the Lord comes, it proceeds before the uh, it, it 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 will show or it will appear before the Lord's second coming. Royal priesthood. Are our husbands or fathers priests in their own sphere? Yes. <laughs> How can? <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's, she's the priest. uh, priestess. <laughs> Correct. The, the, re the reasons why there are many apostasy, even in the Christian denominations or Christians, uh, Christian churches, because the fathers, the male fathers, are not functioning as royal priesthood. That's right. They are not faithful. 
they are, they are not faithful. Through experience, they, they, they let it go. But the Bible is very clear. You are a chosen nation, generation. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, meaning to say a nation that is so exclusive. What composes the nation? Families. Families. All the people. Families and then the communities, churches, and then the counties, and then becomes a nation, right? What, what, what it's saying here is um, our, our unity should be amongst our family to, uh, to, to, to recognize that we are separated, that we are not the same as the world. We are not the same as the other worlds, I would say, who d does not obey and believe God, who does not obey and trust the Lord. You are a holy nation. His or God's special people that you, what's the purpose? You may proclaim. So this is the purpose. You may proclaim. What is proclaim? The praises. Speak out. There are two ways you could speak out. By verbal or non-verbal. Your words or your actions. If you're not good at words, you're good in actions. Right? If you're not good in actions, you're good in words. You should have both. <laughs> it doesn't work the the world. World. <laughs> that's you, called you, hypocrisy <laughs> you, should, you should be good in your words and also th your, your doing is also uh, authentic yes. transparent and uh, authentic meaning you have integrity the, the overall uh, honesty both outside and inside because if you're only honest inside you need to show it the light needs to be seen <laughs> but if you're not honest inside, there is a problem if you're, if you're trying to, to be honest outside because that is what we call <laughs> hypocrisy. It's called fake. Or phoniness. You're a phony. You're, 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 you're just acting out. You're an actor or an actress, right? So these are the calling and these are the characteristics. I would say these are the characteristics, characteristics of the church both in both dispensation old testament and the new testament we are called by god according to peter because we have what we have a special purpose and that is to proclaim what is the method of the devil to deceive the world what is the method of the devil in deceiving the world telling lies proclaiming what is not truth manipulating so he uses the same method that god has established verbal and non-verbal. So remember, that's that's in the in the uh, background of the great controversy. What's the purpose? Of why, why we are proclaiming uh, the praises of Him? Why do we need to praise God? Because He sacrificed His Son, Jesus Christ, right? And we are called out. Your the Bible says, "Who called you out? Who called us out? God." Who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. So from darkness, we have now been called to marvelous light. So can the people distinguish if you are, you say you are out of darkness, but you are still living in darkness? Can people discern, discern that? Yeah, right. Could we discern if people are just playing church or playing, acting yeah. like a Christian? Because their their doing does not uh, does not harmonize with their being, or their being does not harmonize with their doing. So it should be both. What you say, you have to do. Speak, uh, walk the talk. Walk the talk, and not just merely talk the talk. <laughs> right? Why are you laughing? Because it's true. There's so many. Christians who are, who are not really walking what they proclaim or the, what they're talking about. Yeah? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. So this is very clear from Peter. Because why, 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 was, a, was, why, why was Peter able to write these verses, this, this beautiful, uh, insightful, I mean, verses because of his experience? Because he was able to understand that before he was self-confident, overbearing, uh, speaking without thinking, <laughs> you know, speaking without thinking, guy who, who is a rustic uh, attitude about stuff, he knows everything, maybe. He's an expert, master 
of, of his own craft, maybe, because he was a great fisherman. I don't know how great he was, but he was very confident. He was very good with what he, has, what he was doing. But later on, he realized everything was... Huh? Everything was what? <laughs> everything that he was doing was from darkness. I called him Peter is the speaker of the house. The speaker, speaking without thinking. He's speaking before thinking. Yeah. Are there many Christians who speak before they, they think? Yes. A lot of those. <laughs> The Bible, the Bible says, examine ourselves. <laughs> examine ourselves. That could uh, maybe uh, one of one of those. Is First Corinthians. <laughs> <laughs> it's confess now. Confess. <laughs> examine ourselves. Examine ourselves. Yes, yes, yes. So the Bible is very clear that uh, we are called out from darkness into light. Again, this is the characteristics of the Old Testament church and the New Testament church. What about our church today? Are we being called to, to are we being confronted by this text yes. in the great controversy scheme as the great contro controversy is about to to uh, to uh, come to an, a conclusive climactic catastrophic ending. Uh, do you believe so? Yeah. I believe the, we are in a in a in a crash between good and bad. And it seems that the bad is winning, but actually it's the good that is ultimately that will win. Iran or Muslim world versus Christianity. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go again. <laughs> All right. So welcome. So now you can see. Now let's go to the. Yes. Now, if you notice that I I structured our our uh, Bible readings in a chiasmic structure. Yes. In a chiasmic structure. A chiasmic structure. It simply means it's it's like a letter X. Chiasmic is just like a letter X. Mm -hmm. um, what it means is um, chiasmic is a figure of speech where two or more clauses are related to each other through reversal of structures in order to make a larger point. So you can see that I'm making a, a point here. We are called, we are now the New Testament church. We are being called out of darkness to light. Don't stay in darkness, meaning move to the, to the light. Because you are chosen, and by, by response, you also chose God. He chose you by virtue of, of the uh, pre uh, prevenient grace, uh, the uh, great John Wesley would say, by the grace of God, and so your response to grace is by choosing Him. He did not choose you first, He chose you first. So from darkness into light. So Peter was able to, to hammer, to, to, to nail this down because of what he had experienced, right? When he saw the great light. Oh, I was wrong. I thought I was, I was the, uh, the uh, well, uh, uh, well liked uh, fisherman among the, 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 the disciples. The, among the, uh, he was always in the close quarters or close uh, 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 friendship with Jesus. But later on, he realized I was in darkness. Is it possible too that even though we have been in the church, we have been listening to messages that we are still also in darkness, just like Peter? Yes. Yeah, that is the question. <laughs> they have been called to from darkness. They go, they they move. And they are still in darkness. Yeah, they, they think they are in the light, or they are in the truth, present truth, but they are still in darkness. That's a, that's a danger. And that's where the great controversy is ma manipulating you, trying to, 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 to tell your minds, ah, you're, you're, you're in the light, and do, continue to do your, what you've been doing before. That's why my father used to say, if you encounter Jesus, there must be a change. Yes, that's the result. That's the result we are talking about. The reason why we experience hardship, this difficult, as I mentioned earlier, is because there's a reason. It's a teaching moment in order for us to have reason. God will, allows it so that we, we will, to prove that we are really out of darkness. That there is a result. So my question to you and to our, our viewers is, are you already in the light? Are you living in the present truth? We think we are in the light. 
we we think we are yeah. in the light. You we think are, you are in the light. Think, yeah, because Jesus is the light. If you are in Jesus, you are in the light. Amen. You are if you are if if you are in Jesus, you are you have the light. You are you have the light. Okay. Amen. This text, and I would like to read it. First Peter, chapter four, verses one to seven. All right, I'm reading from the New King James Version once again. We are talking about the chiasmic structure of the readings today for this week, and I will like be I'll be talking about the conversion. All right, therefore, when you hear this, therefore, what comes into your mind? Conclusion. There is a reason why this is written or spoken. Therefore, since meaning in the past. Since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, how did Christ suffer for us in the flesh? How did Christ suffer? Huh? So Jesus suffered through the cross. The cross, right? Yeah. Don't forget the cross. Arm yourselves also with the same minds. What does arm? Arm yourselves. What does this mean? How do you arm yourselves? Huh? Arm. Get hold of it. Get hold. Tightly. Tightly. Is what is the strongest part of your hands or of your muscle? Uh, the heart is the strongest. Muscle. The strongest. What what's the strongest in this uh, is it the Swedish? arm or biceps. or the huh? The flexor. The biceps, huh? No, the flexor. The flexor. <laughs> You can flex your muscles. <laughs> okay. So why is the Bible saying arm? The whole arm. Huh? He, 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 he this is just a... Clothed with your... With, uh, the good news. The Bible says arm yourselves also with the same mind. So arm yourselves with the same mind. It's a figure of speech. It says in the good news, it says strengthen yourself. Oh boy. Tell you. That's what I... Strengthen. How, how? How? How do you strengthen yourself? How do you strengthen yourself? My faith comes from hearing and hearing from the Word of God. Repetition and frequency. Exercise. Repetition. Repetition and frequency. Remember that. Repetition. Although you need to have some rest and frequency. And mass or weight. Yeah. Graduated weight. Graduated weight. If you want to strengthen you do your push-ups you do your every day or or every other day you have to have training in fact uh, uh, in the ancient times they would they would really have their open gym to, to train uh, right now we have modern gyms that we we could uh, you know use to to strengthen our muscles if you don't use your muscles what happens withers what is that term atrophy uh, yeah if you don't use it you, lose it, you lose it. Very true. In the biological sense as well as in the spiritual battle. If you don't pray, you don't um, read your Bibles, what happens to you? Huh? You deteriorate. You, de <laughs> you deteriorate, right? And then you don't do mission and go out. What happens to you? You become... What? You become malnourished, spiritually malnourished, and then what happens if you become spiritually malnourished? You don't have the love of Jesus anymore. You have, who will, if you're empty of the love of Jesus, who will, who will fill it up? The devil will fill it up with his hatred. The devil will fill it up with foolishness. <laughs> no, please don't point any any fingers to anybody. <laughs> we are all learners and students here from you know, from this see, experience. See, see what I'm trying to say. Yeah, what are you trying to say? She's in the light. She's <laughs> not in the light. <laughs> okay. We cannot <laughs> accuse each other if we are, you know. If... <laughs> all right. So you can see now. From Peter's experience that we are learning that if we are not arming ourselves, that we are not strengthening ourselves, as what the version Good News Bible is saying, we will be spiritually weak. Now remember, why we are, why we are training, uh, why we are arming, why we are strengthening ourselves, because Jesus suffered for us. And what kind of arm are we going to, to, to uh, what kind of strengthening, arming ourselves? The mind of who? The mind of Christ. 
very powerful. The mind of Christ. What is the mind of Christ? The word. Of the word of, what is in the word of God? Truth. Truth. And I believe that the mind of Christ is full of love. God is love. Jesus is God. Therefore, Jesus is love. Jesus Christ is love. Agape. <laughs> All right. Do you make sense? I'll continue reading. And the Bible says, He has suffered in the flesh, has ceased, for He has suffered in the same in the flesh, had ceased from sin. Do you know what is the word cease mean? Stop. stop. Voluntarily stop by will and by choice. You stop because it's, it's, like, it's not like you are tired. You stop because you decided to stop. Just like Jesus, when He created the world in six days, He ceased from His labor, not because He is tired, but because He wants to do something else special. Oh, He does. Right? And because He has done, correct. He has done it. Everything was good and perfect. And so He ceased, meaning voluntarily stopping. With You know, you're, you're still strong, but you stop. Cease from sinning. Before sin grows, you have to stop sinning how could you stop from sinning <laughs> that's the problem <laughs> how could you stop from sinning by taking away the commandments take oh you, can you can you can you, can you can you stop sinning by uh, taking away the commandments i don't you, think so there is no law you can stop that there is yet. no law there's no sin no, there is no sin there is no savior there is no <laughs> salvation <laughs> logically there's speaking no law is chaos. If, if yeah if uh, sin is eradicated, then there's no death, no second death. If sin is eradicated, what, what, what was eradicated on the cross was the death imposed on the second death. Okay. Because the death is imposed by sinning against the commandments, right? What's the commandment? Sin is death. You committed acts that are against the death commandments, then death is the result. Okay, what is, by the way, define sin in the in, in the biblical point of view. Transgression. Transgression of the law, it's missing the mark. Right. You you did not hit the standard, meaning you, you failed. Yeah. You failed in hitting the standard, meaning you did not arrive to that standard. The standard is there. Why they did it? You, you willfully and uh, you you choose to, to, right. to by not practicing. Uh, Christian, uh, what I mean, by not practicing godliness and obedience. We cannot eradicate sin by uh, abolishing the law. We can only eradicate sin by surrendering our will to the will of Christ. Because we are weak. And Christ alone is, uh, is strong. Christ alone and His strength is made perfect in our weakness. Can Listen. Yeah. Can we stop sinning? Can we stop sinning? You can choose not to sin. You could stop not to sin. There is there is an explanation. When he say he stopped sinning. Remember the story of the woman? Mm -hmm. Christ say, Go and see no, no more. more. Right. The translation is go and see no more. Is stop what you have been doing. Right. So that is that's why they can it's, stop sinning. I can do all things through Christ. Can you stop sinning? You know your sins, right? I don't need to hear your confession. Yes. How do we? Well, but we still live in these lust, these fleshly bodies. Yes, so right. So how can we stop sinning? Because even Paul said the spirit is, is strong, but the flesh is weak. Weak. How can? So we? until our salvation is complete, at the end of the world, I. I Maybe I'm looking at So you're somebody. you're anticipating that you will sin in the in the future or in the morning. Oh, yes, I am. And that's, but who but will save me from this? That's Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ yeah. Will save me from this. Now, again, the Bible is describing us the uh, the cure for our problem of sin, arming, strengthening yes. your mind. It's it, the choice is there. The great controversy, as I've discussed last week, it's in the mental aspect as well mental meaning to say like for example a uh, practical question if the tv viewing or movie viewing films and and uh, the whatever you're seeing there uh, triggers you to feel something that is sinful how can you stop turning it off switch it off it's mind over 
Matter. matter. It's mind over heart. If you feel like, oh, there is this uh, show that promotes violence and, and lust, what do you do? Turn it off, walk away, and you know what? Lord, <laughs> shake mind, off the... Mind over waste matter. <laughs> mind over what? Waste matter. Maze matter. Waste, waste yeah. matter. If you see something like that and you enjoy it, is that sinning? What? <laughs> You're enjoying sin? Oh, what am no, I hearing? <laughs> oh, what am I hearing? Okay. No, what I'm trying to say is, when you are seeing, you are You're watching. Or, or you're watching. You're, you're watching. watching. That your senses are open. You, the great controversy yeah, uh, is is becoming full blown. You enjoy it. Okay. Yeah, you know, like for example, violence. You enjoy violence. No, Something is wrong no, if you enjoy violence. No, no he enjoys no. women, pastor. No, well, you enjoy watching it. Oh, Which no. one? Whatever is in there, okay? Well, I don't know are what you, is in there. Are you sitting? <laughs> uh, I don't know what is in there. Maybe you're watching 3ABN or or Dog Bachelor or you're watching Hope Channel or you're watching uh, the, uh, TBN or you're well, watching... What I'm trying to say is just the regular one. Well, what's the regular the one? World. The <laughs> world. Oh, be careful the of the secular, world. The uh, secular no, I mean, and the spiritual are anti... Scene? watching history, I mean actual history, which involves a information. Lot of violence. Like, so you say you want to watch a special one on um, the Vietnam War or on, on, well, on the life of Adolf Hitler, which involves a lot that's of... That's documentary, and yeah. that, that is history. That's history. It does not manipulate you to think that you're the one acting out. Like, like some of the shows that you feel that you're involved. Mm. Yes, you do. You're, you're involved with, with something that is hatred, passion, and, and lust. That, those are different stories. Yeah, we got yeah. a lot of those. <laughs> we got a lot of those. That's why we have to prevent. Just like in the Bible, it said it's the hammer of God, right? Joshua was the hammer of God, right? For Israel, right? When you're a hammer, everything that you see is a nail, right? So you strike on the nail. So what's the point? Point is this. When Joshua led after Moses, uh -huh. he was the hammer of Israel. He killed a lot of people in the name of God. In the name, of, he he was in obedience to the command of God to not to spread idolatry. Now, so that his people will not. The kill is in the Ten Commandments. Was he sinning? <laughs> Every time he kills somebody, what does the no. name of God? Yeah, just like, just like these Muslim people. Uh, well, they, he, they, they there, there is a killing without sinning. There's a, <laughs> oh, no, come on. <laughs> just like being angry without sinning. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was a direct command from God yeah. to, sure, to, to sure, annihilate sure. idolatrous nation. And yes. God is a righteous God judges were, through Joshua. Yeah. They were used. I agree, there was violence there, but it was God directed. Who are we to question God's motive why he wanted to kill all the enemies, all the idolaters in that land, the so wicked people? If you are watching TV, uh, just by chance that you see... A just by chance you, you watch chance. TV? Yeah, no. <laughs> 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 Is it by chance or by choice? <laughs> so you did it. Oh, I didn't know that I turned it on. <laughs> you are watching something, but it comes out like that. So you blame the tea, the, the producer? No, no, no. <laughs> then are, are you sinning about that? Pop up. How should we say? Um, because it's temptation is not sin. Those are temptations. What is sin yielding. is yielding. Yeah. You you oh I like oh. This I idea this of one. what I, I, I enjoy what this idea. No, I I said I didn't I don't like you did. You don't like her. Enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> You're enjoying no. violence and lust. That's a different story, right? Well, that's 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 uh, what you're going. You to cannot that's... you cannot reason out with if you are tuning in and your grandson or granddaughter will come in and, uh, Grandpa, what are you watching? You, so you cannot justify so anything. In, it's in, oh, it's just passing by by chance. It's <laughs> <laughs> by chance. It it just happened that way. So entertaining is sin. Huh? <laughs> Yielding. I'll, I'll explain that as we go along, as we read the text. Please don't justify your actions. <laughs> no, no, I'm not justifying it. I'm asking you. Okay. But this is what the Bible says. Cease from sin, verse 2, that he no longer should live with the rest of his time in the flesh. Do not live in the flesh for the lusts of men, but for the will of God. 
verse 3, For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles, the unbelievers, the idolaters. When we walk in lewdness, what is lewdness? Lewdness. L-E-W-D. N-E-S-S. Lewdness. Sin. Anything about sex is lewdness. Yeah. Sin. Sin. What you're seeing in, 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 in whatever shows that is, it's... Uh, or reading in a Sexual. smut magazine or Sexual. lust. But, but, but this is the Bible says. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, There's God, no but here. God designed that. <laughs> God designed what? Sex. <laughs> sure, sure, yes, sure. In the in the context of being a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a chosen people. In the purity of a relationship that is loving and committed and consummated, not in a fly-by-night, one-night stand, uh, no uncommitted, uh, free-for-all uh, type of thing, which is prevalent in our society, which is lust. <laughs> the Bible says, walked away from lewdness, lust, and drunkenness, rivalries, drunken drinking parties and abominable idolaters now abominable idol idolaters here has to do with same sex sex uh, same sex acts in the temple that's what the bible says abomination yeah. in the temple uh, male prostitutes they call it abominable acts lesbos huh? you women so huh? women yeah i'm saying same sex act yeah, yeah, or practice yeah. We, we should not discriminate with same sex. We are, we are, according to the Bible, we are to walk away from abominable acts. And in the Old Testament, abominable acts are lying, uh, sleeping with, or consuming same passion with, 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 with what? Same, same gender. gender. That's what the Bible says. But if you, if you, <laughs> there's another but. There's no but. <laughs> there's no but there. If you, if you, if you, if you're lying with the uh, opposite sex, what, what is that? If it is not, if he, uh, if he or she is not uh, your, it's, it's, it's not a committed uh, relationship. That's uh, that's a uh, well, extramarital affair. Affair. <laughs> Even the court of law will 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 accuse you of adultery. Yeah. If somebody, if, if your spouse will file. Uh, a, a case against you you are liable by by virtue of the legal uh, legal uh, laws uh, the legal <laughs> now during that time during that time remember the context of, of that time it was not our like the, during that time the king is the law the word of the word of the king is the law and that is it was not sanctioned by God it was presented in the scripture so that we will learn through Solomon's experience yeah. And we should not follow seven hundred. Can you af can you afford seven hundred <laughs> wives, uh, mistresses, and three hundred wives? Well, it, it, you cannot it, even it, afford two, right? We cannot even afford two. He, can't afford one. he, he cannot even afford he, one wife. He can afford because he let them. All the women work sixteen hours a day. Oh wow! Well, I didn't hear that. Sixteen. And then they get too, too tired. They cannot fight among them. Okay. <laughs> I don't know about that, but we are told. In regard to these, the the bad actions, the the unchristian, unholy unpriestly actions that that were mentioned by Paul by Peter here in regard to these listen to what he was he was trying to argue they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation speaking evil of you meaning to say what does it uh, what does uh, Paul was trying to say huh in regards of of of, of these uh, unchristian or un unholy action what does the Bible says? Let's continue. What verse are you reading from again? Uh, First Peter, chapter four, verses one to seven, and I'm now in verse four. In regard to this, they think the Gentiles think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of this. Meaning, if you are a holy nation, if you are a pe <laughs> people, people don't like the word peculiar for some reasons, but peculiar is a, it's a good word. Yeah. Meaning, you are you you are chosen by God. You don't follow yeah, our the world. church is very peculiar. Right? Yes, yes, that. very unique. That. Yes, uh, yes, but <laughs> it's question mark. It's <laughs> Please don't attack the church. The church is the no, the, not, the apple I'm, of the eye of God, the the the, the, the yeah. object of Christ's highest regard on earth, the supreme regard on earth. The Bible says that if they think 
the Gentiles, the unbelievers, that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. This is expected. The secular world that are ungodly will accuse those who live godly lives because, godly lives because they are the godly people, the believers, are a testament to their wrong actions. They will in fact have the audacity to speak evil of the good people or the Christians. The Bible says, they will give an account of him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at, is at hand. Therefore, uh, Peter was, uh, was trying to say here in the great controversy scheme, therefore be serious. Are we serious? Be serious. What is serious? Now, be, serious is not you are seriously ill. <laughs> you you brought to the hospital. Ser, serious means you are. You mean, you mean what you your, what you believe. Your attitude. You, you you are sincerely, earnestly um, living your faith. You are not kidding. You are You're, not it's kidding. a living faith. You are ready to be. You're ready to 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 cut an arm. For your faith. Wow. Wow. <laughs> you're ready to you're ready to face the, the persecution and 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 you can tell your persecutors, bring it on. Wow. Wow. Serious, that's the word serious there. Be serious and watchful. Watchful. What are you watching? <laughs> what are you all watching? <laughs> In your, in your homes, are you eating the, the spiritual food or you're eating the secular food in your homes? Not the physical food, but I'm talking Tell about... Huh? Tell Tell serie. Serie. The sexual food. <laughs> See the, the translation here. He say, Therefore be clear-minded and self-control so that you can pray. If you are not... If your mind is not clear and you are not it's a clear. It's a, you can meaning you're clean. pure. Yeah. Meaning you are not garbage in. Is uh, garbage in is garbage out. Meaning to say your heart, your mind is filled with the word of God, the living word, the 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 faithful word. Be serious and watchful in your prayers. Don't, don't take know, for granted your prayers. Strengthen it. Don't you know our church is filled with word of God? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It should transform. Teach. The Word of God to transform people. Live the Word of God to, 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 to be seen. That you are the light of the world, right? Be, but the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Isn't that a conversion experience just like what I have written here? If you are converted, you will be serious and watchful in your prayer life. Uh, what uh, he is pointing is uh, not only... The, the real gospel, it's, it's the twisted gospel. It's the 99% true and 1% We can only find false. the truth in Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. John 14, verse 6. Let's move on as we catch up. Daniel 2, verses 34 to 35, according to this mm -hmm. chiasmic okay, structure, they're talking about the, the prophecy of the Messiah. Daniel chapter 2. Remember the story of uh, Nebuchadnezzar's dream and uh, Daniel's uh, interpretation. This is very important because Daniel has been written about uh, about uh, eight, uh, eight century before Jesus Christ first appeared. And we are waiting for his second coming right now. Ja uh, Daniel chapter 2 verses uh, 32. 34. Uh, 34 to you 35. While a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image at its feet of iron and clay, and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together and became like chaff from the summer threshing floors. The wind carried them away, so no trace of them was found. And the stone that struck the image 
became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. The first coming that before the Lord Jesus Christ came, the Old Testament through the prophet Daniel predicted and prophesied that the kingdoms, Babylon, Middle Persia, Greece, Rome, and the United Kingdom, the, the disunited kingdom, I would say, of Europe, will be crushed. Look at the image. It will be crushed, destroyed by the stone, by the rock, out of nowhere. A supernatural phenomena that will crush the worldly powers. It has a connotation, even in our time, that this world, as predicted in the Old Testament, and affirmed by Peter later on in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 to 14, it will be crushed. L listen to what... Uh, uh, Peter has to say about the end of the world before uh, when the Lord Jesus Christ comes. Second Peter, chapter thirteen, a uh, chapter three. I mean, sorry. Verses uh, thirteen to fourteen. Let me let me read this to you. The Bible is very clear. Nevertheless, we talking about the day of the Lord when Jesus Christ will finally come and judge the world. Nevertheless, we according to His promise look for the new heavens. According to his promise, uh, look for the new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. Let's go back to verse uh, 11, 12, and then uh, I'll read this. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, here we go again, the word, dissolved, crushed in the Old Testament, dissolved. What manner of persons you ought to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the Lord, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, dissolved being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Dissolve, melt. This is the picture of the second coming of Christ. If you are in the world, you are hanging on, clinging to the world, you will be dissolved and melted by fire. So it's gone. So there will be no more sin. There will be no more sinners. Yep. That's the coming in the New Testament and the Old Testament. <clears throat> so what is the conclusion of the whole matter as we study this? What are the three conclusions that I could learn, that you and I could learn, I mean? It's found in... 2 Peter chapter 1. Let's go there. 2 Peter chapter 1. Um, verses 16 to 21. The Bible says, talking about trustworthy of uh, trustworthiness of the prophetic word. Verse 16. For we did not follow. Who's we? All humans. Um, not quite. The believers. Because if... Because many humans follow cunning, cunningly deceived fables. First Peter, uh, Second Peter, chapter one, yeah. verses sixteen: For we do not follow cunningly devised fables, when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of His Majesty. We do not follow. So we're talking to the true believers? He's talking to the true believers. Peter, was now who is a transformed person, is talking to the believers in the context, hey, there's a great war between good and evil. Do not follow cunningly devised fables, meaning crafty, deceitful. Um, uh, it, it's a skill of... of, of, of it's a skill of um, being cunning. It's a skill in deceiving... Uh, in deceiving uh -huh. stories yeah through uh, fables or stories it achieving one's end by deceit during during the time of the apostles there are so many uh, theory that is going around right. especially the res the resurrection of Jesus Christ they make it a fable so Peter is reclaiming that we did not follow those things. We are eyewitnesses that Christ 
ascended from the dead. Are we eyewitnesses as well? Are you eyewitnesses? No. No, you're not. <laughs> Which is true. You have not seen. But are we faith witnesses? Yeah. Mm, that's the difference. We are blessed. We have not seen, but we believe. Yeah. So we're blessed. We're more blessed than those who have seen and they did not believe. And we do not follow. We do not. What does follow means? We do not yield. Just like sin. We do not follow sin. <laughs> I don't you do. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Right? We do not follow sin. But it, does sin, sin follow, follow you? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> not only you, all of us. <laughs> but that's a good point, huh? Yeah, yes, Very he, valid. Very good. He, he, does not, yeah, no. he does not follow let me write it down. You don't follow for our viewers. You do not. You may choose not to follow sin. You do not follow sin. But sin follows you. Like your own shadow. But can you shake off? Can you shake off sin? No, it's always there. Temptation is always there. Yielding to temptation is sin. Yeah. You could say no. No, not today. Not tomorrow. Next time. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. <laughs> Strengthen your resolve to be like Jesus in his mind. Devil, get thee away from me. I will not worship you. Ah, the, the Bible says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word I that never proceeds. Worship the devil. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, we may, but we have to be careful. The devil yeah, does yeah. not but only... The, but the devil worship you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's even more dangerous. <laughs> so now you're, the devil thinks he's the highest, uh, the highest, the highest created being. If you begin to follow, you know, if sometimes you know, sometimes when my crazy mind, I said, if I can see the devil, I gonna, I gotta kill him. <laughs> oh, the devil uh, is 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 very cunning. Yeah. He 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 appears like a very good looking, great looking, not only man but also woman. With deceptive uh, <coughs> words and poisonous. Uh, if you see, if you see a beautiful lady, that's <laughs> you cannot, you some, cannot just. Uh, well, the uh, devil might remember in the in the in the espionage world. What are the means to to gain access to the secrets of government? Women and yeah. cash. What Why else? See, and cast. <laughs> <laughs> the devil can use trickery. See how 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 Samson is very strong guy. Yeah, he strengthened his physical, but not his moral. <laughs> but when when we talk about following, one time he said, "Don't follow me. I am lost too." <laughs> Don't follow you. You're lost too. I'm lost too. Yeah. <laughs> That it is hard to follow whom you do not know. Right. You need to follow someone. And you must know whom you are following. Knows, the, shep the sheep knows the, the, the voice of the shepherd. Do not follow cunningly devised fables. Meaning, hey, listen to the word of God, the prophecy. Wake up. See, the problem is people don't read the word of God. And that's why they... Yeah, they fall how can in, you in make them path. not follow the uh, how can you make not how can how how why is it that people are not reading the word because they are being distracted or their attention is diverted by the devil to something else facebook well there are good things about facebook too there are bible no, tags and, 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 and uh, work, we are tired. okay that's another distraction the work yeah excessive. You're, but if, if, or you your don't work, you don't eat. Or the authorities don't. Want but you, you, you can money. only work for so much well, and not affect your awareness or alertness. You work only part time, so don't worry. You <laughs> 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 cannot survive with part time. No, I, I work full time. Full time. Yeah, here. But sometimes the devil uses our work to be our well, distraction. I, I, I hope not. Do you read your Bible in your work? Do you pray in your no. work? How can you read the He's Bible? Is there a listen, just listen to the Bible. Yeah, I listen to the, the, the tape. Okay, very That's good. It, did it transform you? 
Maybe not. Maybe yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's a subjective question. <laughs> All right. Don't listen to Jesuits. <laughs> right, you. Do not follow cunningly devised no, fables. Pastor. Go back to the Bible. Go back no. to the Word. Pastor. Love the Word. We are saying always, you know, a lot of people always, oh, I follow this, I follow that. And yet, they don't. The life of, of style of what ever is not the same right it's 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 pertaining to me i i cannot follow all those things really uh, what, what you cannot follow what i mean <laughs> <laughs> you you follow something else <laughs> no, I, <laughs> you don't follow this you follow that <laughs> you're being honest that you know it's tough out there Right. I guess, you know, yes. It's only tough if you make a decision to to, to follow Jesus. Even then, it, it, it's still hard. I mean, you know, we sure. it's I difficult. It's no, to it's be a Christian. It's not difficult. It's, it's impossible. impossible. <laughs> Without Christ, it is Without impossible. Christ, right, yeah. So, that's what you so say. are you following someone? Maybe. Be sure what you're following is not, <laughs> is not lost too. <laughs> be sure you follow Jesus. The Bible continues to say, as a conclusion, do not follow cunning, cunningly devised uh, fables. For he received from, or God received from God, the, Jesus received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the ex excellent glory. Remember this. He said this during the baptism of Jesus. This is my beloved mm -hmm. Son in whom I am well pleased. And we heard this voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain, mm -hmm. Mount of Transfiguration. Right. Remember in, in uh, Matthew chapter 17, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. the Mount of Transfiguration, who was there? Peter, P Peter, Jim, and John, John yeah. they saw uh, Moses and Elijah. Verse uh, 19. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed. So, Confirm in your hearts the prophetic word. Confirm. What does confirm means? Confirm means stable, sure, trustworthy. Save it. Trustworthy, sure, stable. Do you like a stable person or an unstable person? You like both. You like to have. You don't discriminate. Okay. <laughs> you don't discriminate also sin. You have to discriminate sin from the sinner. <laughs> yeah, you don't discriminate between uh, between uh, you know employment empl employment uh, opportunities and, and access to help. You don't want to discriminate with that. Or yeah, those are specific. But about sin, you have to discriminate sin. Yeah, between good and, and but you, you cannot discriminate sinners. Yeah, true. But uh, if the if the sinner is um, is what we call we this all, unstable. If we are unstable, who guess who will discriminate us? We will not be confirmed. <laughs> if you are unstable, nobody will confirm you. That's discrimination. But sorry to tell you, if you are discriminated, meaning you're out. Yeah. If God will say, well, God will discriminate in the last days. Right. Those people who are saved in the right hand, in the sheep. Those who are not saved in the left hand, the goats. That's the judgment. That's the judgment. So God is a great discriminator of evil and good. The best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Confirm in your hearts the prophetic word. I like that. Confirm in your hearts the prophetic word. And the, the last conclusion. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in dark places until the day dawns and the morning star arises in your hearts, meaning talking about Jesus. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation, meaning the two keys of principles, of hermeneutical principles, soundness, context is key, and scripture interprets scripture. For prophecy never came, verse 21, by the will of him, of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Goes into full circle. Holy men. The Bible says, be holy. 
in in First Peter, right? The characteristics of God's people, calling us to be holy, because holy men or women, moved by the Holy Spirit, can proclaim the prophecy. If you are not sanctified, you're not set apart for proclamation of the praises of Him, you will not be able to do it without the Holy Spirit moving you. So these are our three conclusions. Do not follow cunningly devised fables. Confirm in your hearts the prophetic word. Prophecy spoken by the holy man. Moved by God. A move in the moved by the, by the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. So you now see why what Peter was trying to say in uh, in the context or in the in the in the drama of the great controversy. Reason and result through his experience, he denied Jesus and now he's confessing Jesus even until death. From darkness into light. Experience teach him. Whatever experience that is, bitter, painful, excruciatingly frustrating, he was transformed. He became transformed. Opposite of Judas. He was a failure at first and now he's faithful. That's the core of, of our lesson for this week. Do you have any questions so far? But it's not a question. But it's it not a is, question? It is a commentary that is a... Anytime you read the writing of St. Peter, you can see how a converted life demonstration right. before the resurrection, before, during the three and a half years with them, especially Peter, mm -hmm. doubt. Mm -hmm. Who Christ is, especially mm -hmm. the sermon today. Right. But after the resurrection, after the Pentecost, mm -hmm. the night becomes day, and Peter is one of the best, boldest person who is speak in inside of Christ. Don't you know that it, he says that before, during the the this, this Council of Sanhedrin, do you know what will happen to Peter? He will be killed. But after the resurrection, he is very bold, mm -hmm. declaring who Christ is. He was a transformed person. Peter was a transformed man. Mm -hmm. Now the appeal to us today, before we wind up, is are we transformed by our experiences to become followers of Jesus? I, hear, I hear a sermon, that the terminology, that we do not follow the vice cunning fables, he delivered a sermon that is stick in my mind that it must be bestowed to God's people today. Mm -hmm. That we do not follow what the world say, but we testify who Christ is. Amen. Because that is the only way we can have salvation. Amen. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Amen. But I want the last statement. The only way we can possibly... Jesus the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. No one goes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Thank you for your contributions and your comments. Let us close this uh, Sabbath School lesson preview with a prayer. Dear Lord, we would like to follow Jesus as well. And just like Peter, we are experiencing many things. The great controversy is raging in our minds and our hearts. Whether to deny or follow the faith that was set before us, that was given before us, to, to be taught or to be transformed and be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Lord God, I pray that from failure we will become faithful. That the reason we are experiencing this, exper uh, this experiences that we, are, that we have in this world is for us to show to the world the result of our witnessing, and that is that we have been with Jesus. By faith, we acknowledge that you are the God of our lives. We welcome you, and we want you to walk with us until that very day when you will come again and receive us and not be consumed, melted, crushed, or dissolved by fire. Thank you for the promise of the Holy Spirit, and thank you for saving us today with the forgiveness of all our sins in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you all.